Hello, how is everybody? I hope everybody's fine and dandy and better than my hair. I wash my hair and, and when I wash my hair, this is what happens to it. It gets, I mean, it's like the curls, it's my Jufro. It is, look at how curly this darn thing is. I can't blow dry it myself because there's too much of it and it's really thick and just, it's just like, I mean, look at this thing. It's, it's, I look like it. Okay, I'll put it down like this. Let's see all that, all the curls. Yeah, I like it when it's straight. And also, I like it when it's, um, if it's gonna be messy like this, I like it when it's darker. I don't like it blonde and messy like this because it doesn't look good. It looks like, like my hair's dirty, when in fact my hair is quite the opposite. Anyway, enough about my hair. You can see it. I don't have to talk about it anymore. But I wanted to bring up one line, one thing that I was talking about yesterday um, about John Kladner, who's the A&R, um, head of A&R over at Geffen Records. He had said there was an E! True Hollywood story done on me, and they interviewed him about me, and he called me Yoko Ono. He said I was the Yoko Ono of the, of, of the band. And at the time, I was really hurt. I was hurt that someone would think that I was the one telling everybody what to do, bossing everybody around, picking everything, uh, producing, um, picking photographers, picking album covers, picking um, tour books, uh, doing Lammies, picking the bands, picking the bands that went on tour with us. Here's a little known little secret that nobody knows, not even the band knows this. I would get a cassette tape of who they, of who uh, uh, Geffen Records wanted to open for us. And I would listen to it and I would approve the bands that opened for us, Poison being one of them and a few other bands. Now, one band that came across my frontal lobes was a band called Guns and Roses. And I heard that tape and I was so completely blown away by this band that I knew that if they opened for us, that we would look like shit compared to them. So I secretly gave back the tape to Jimmy Ayers, the road manager, and said, this band will not be opening up for us. I didn't give them the chance to open up for us. Um, they went on and opened up for another band, I don't remember who, but we had the chance and I nixed it because they were just, they were so damn good. Why would I put on a band that was better than, than, the, uh, than the closing, than, than us? I, who would do that? I'm not gonna do that. No, hell no. They were gonna get their start somewhere else. They weren't gonna get it off the backs of, of, of this band with white and the word snake in it. So and they were really upset at me for not giving them a chance, but I thought, well, they're good. They're going to get they're going to become famous by themselves. They don't need our help. And and really they're the only rock and roll band that survived when um when bands like Nirvana came along to the scene. So, um yeah, I I nixed Guns N' Roses opening up for us. Um like I said, I didn't even tell the band that. So Rudy, if you're just hearing this for the first time, sorry, but I had to. I had to save the integrity of the band that was the opening, who that was the closing act, not the opening act. And and my loyalty was to Whitesnake. So there. So there was another reason why John Kladner was um, thoroughly upset with me um, because I kept balking the system, but I wasn't balking the system just to balk it. I was doing it because I knew it was right. And, and I had to go with my gut and my gut, you know, I guess proved itself to be right at times. So there's that. And there's the end of the John Claudner story because there's really not much more to talk about him except for <laughs> all the times that he would yell at me. He wouldn't yell at me because he's a very soft-spoken man, but in his way, he was very disappointed in me because I made him look like he didn't know what he was doing. But in actuality, had it gone his way, maybe the band wouldn't have been as successful. 
who knows? I'm not going to take the full credit. I mean, they were great musicians, although everybody in the band was not on the album. The only person that was on the album was David. John Sykes, who's an incredible guitar player, him and John got in a huge fight and it was irreconcilable and they could not never get it back. And so John never played on the tour and never got any of the merch money. So, but I'm sure he still did well and I should be getting the thank you card from him soon. <laughs> I won't hold my breath. Anyway, have a great weekend, and by the time you see me next, hopefully my hair will be straight, and I'll look like I'm put together. Right now, I'm just saying hi because I am terribly bored, and I don't have anything else to do except for to watch all my news channels that I've I've TiVo'd. I've got the Bill Mars show, which I absolutely love. I love him because he's not a Republican and he's not a Democrat. He can see the issues on both sides and he calls everybody out. And so I love that show. Um, and I'm watching CBS Morning News this morning and I'm watching uh, Sunday Morning with Willie Geist. And I'm just addicted to the news and that's who I am these days. So if you want to hang out with me, We'll probably be watching the news together or at least listening to it in the um, in the car and the radio anyway have a great weekend like I said before all my love Let's talk to you guys later bye